Hello and welcome to another great tutorial. Today we're looking at using the new iOS version of Band in a Box. This is an all new app and we're excited to show you how it works. Let's dive right in, shall we? This is the main screen. It primarily features the chord sheet plus the main menu and style picker in the upper left and song information, help, dark mode, song form, key, and tempo in the upper right. At the bottom there is a track and instrument selector, mute and volume controls, transport and generation controls, and access to the notation, fretboard, keyboard, and edit views. Now I'll touch on the controls in a minute, but for those of you who would prefer to explore them yourself, let's just show you the basics. Let's start by creating a simple song. I'll start by choosing a style. This funk walk one should do nicely. Next, I'll enter some chords. You do that by tapping on the pencil button in the bottom right. Eight bars should be enough for a quick test here. And of course, I'll change my song form to eight bars. Now I just need to press play to hear my song. From here, let's take a look at the other views. Notation view will display sheet music for whichever track you're viewing. You can switch tracks using the track selector buttons in the lower left. And if a track has lyrics, those will be displayed too. Notation can be zoomed in and out using a two finger pinch gesture. In addition, you can also view a guitar fretboard which will flash each note as it plays and a piano keyboard which does the same thing. In either the fretboard or keyboard views, there is a gear icon in the upper right which allows you to control how many frets or octaves are being displayed. Now, creating a song from scratch is one thing, but if you're anything like me, you probably have plenty of existing songs that you want to open. Naturally, you can use the open options in the main menu, but how do you get your songs onto your iPad or iPhone in the first place? Well, thankfully that's pretty easy, and there are a few different ways to do it. The easiest way is to email a song file to yourself. Simply tap on the file in your email, then on Open in Band in a Box. But that only allows you to open one song at a time, which would get pretty tedious if you have a lot of files. Thankfully, we've also included zip support. If you email a zip file full of songs to yourself, you can open that in Band in a Box too. You can choose a folder to extract the songs to, or you can send the songs directly into the songs folder by clicking the X on the right side of the folder name. Once you've chosen where to store them, tap on unzip in the upper right. Once you've got a number of songs loaded, the best way to find and open your songs is using the song picker, which is capable of displaying a list of up to 2000 songs. To open the song picker, tap on the song title at the top of the screen. From here, you can search for the song you want, you can search using the song name or folder name, and you can easily filter the list to a specific folder by tapping the folder icon in the upper left, then choosing the folder. The app will save your most recent folder and search keywords, making it super easy to create track lists for your next gig. Now that covers the basics, but naturally there's more under the hood. If you're a seasoned Band in a Box user already, you may have noticed that the styles list featured only MIDI styles, not real styles. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to announce that this new Band in a Box app can generate real styles too. And even better, you don't need to fill your device with hundreds of gigabytes of real tracks. If we take a look in the style picker, you'll notice that there is a local or server toggle at the top. If you switch to server, you can choose one out of over 10,000 styles. Let's filter the list to real styles only, then filter a little further to find a Latin style with a swing feel. Then I'll tap on the refresh button. That's narrowed down the list from 11,431 styles to 19, which is much more manageable. I'll try this Peruvian festejo style. Let's play the demo to see how that sounds. Ah, oh, cool, that sounds pretty good, so let's load the style. Now, depending on the style you chose, the app may pop up a warning. The required style is not in your device. It can be downloaded from our server if you agree to the server agreement in the next dialog. Click on OK to display the user agreement, give it a read, then click I agree to continue. Keep in mind that if you don't agree to the server user agreement, then the app will be limited to the 150 built-in styles. 
Anyway, now that the style is downloaded, let's generate our song and see how it sounds. Tap on the Generate button and you'll be presented with a few options. The first option, Generate Real Tracks Server, will contact our servers to generate the song for you. This will take a few moments. This song took only six seconds, and your song will begin playing when generation is finished. How cool is that? And to finish up, it's time to dive deeper into the main menu. That's the button with the three lines on it in the upper left. We've affectionately named this the hamburger button. Either way, give that button a tap and the menu will appear. Most of these menu items are pretty self-explanatory, but I'll touch on a few of them. You may notice that there are two sets of open and save buttons. This is because there are two distinct locations where files can be saved. Local Songs basically saves your song files in the app's local storage, meaning that other applications can't access them, while Saving to the Files app saves them outside of the app. This is merely a preference, so just choose one and go from there. Moving on, the Export option allows you to send any song file that's saved in local storage to another location, device, or person. Simply choose the file from the list and tap on the Send button. This looks like a sheet of paper with an arrow pointing up, and it will ask you what to do. You can send it via AirDrop, Messages, or Email, or you can save to Files, which allows other applications to open these files or to save them on iCloud. Next on the main menu is Record Melody. This allows you to record onto the Melody or Soloist track using a MIDI controller. There are a few options here that allow you to control where to start recording from, whether or not to overdub, which means that your new recording will be mixed with the old in case you want to record two hands separately, and what to record. Typically you want to record notes plus sustain pedal and pitch bend, but you can enable or disable various MIDI controls here. Once you've got this set up how you want, simply tap record and get ready to play. When you're finished, tap on stop. The app will prompt you whether to keep the take or cancel, so let's choose keep take. Now you can play your song to see how it sounds. Next on the list, we have score options. This allows us to control how the notation looks. This allows you to display each track on the treble or bass clef, show tablature, or to automatically choose for you. Just below that is an option to toggle the toolbars. This hides two of the toolbars, making the chord sheet bigger and less busy, and toggling again will unhide the toolbars. Print to PDF is simple enough, however I just want to mention that there are options for portrait and landscape, plus a magnification control in case you want the notation to be bigger or if you want more to fit on one page. The info button on the menu here simply gives you some information about the app, in particular the version and build number. And finally, Settings lets you change the preferences in the app. General settings include various options for repeats, page flipping, and the appearance of the app, while the piano and fretboard settings control the appearance of the note highlighting in those views. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching. I hope you've learned something here today. However, if you've got any questions or run into any trouble, feel free to contact our customer service team. We're available by phone, email, and online chat, and we're always happy to help. Either way, keep on rocking, and as always, have fun!